guys, Shea Bear 1000 again. Today, we're going to be replacing this starter on a 2005 Chrysler Sebring convertible. Stay tuned. Let's get with it. You can see, first step, I unhook the battery. Okay. Um, this is taken apart from the last video where I showed you how to change the battery. So. I had mentioned in there that I may have a bad starter, which the battery was shot. It was clear gone. But the starter is bad as well. So that's why I'd mentioned in the other video that I'm probably going to have to change the starter. So here we are changing it. Now up here, down in here guys, there's a wire right here. What that does, it plugs into your O2 sensor, your oxygen sensor, and your exhaust pipe I'll show you in a minute. Now what you got to do is you got to take this motor mount off. Okay, this bracket and this bracket. That's your motor mount. There's three bolts down at the bottom underneath. We're going down under there. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. There's another O2 sensor here, and I believe there's one more on the back. I'm not positive about that. but So anyway, we're not here for that. So there's a couple of screws here. Two little bolts here I'm going to take out to remove this shield here. Okay, I've already got most of these things loose for you guys so and here's the O2 sensor I was telling you about right here now this is a 7 8 which yes I have loosened that as well and there's oops sorry smoke there's a bolt there and a bolt there that has to come out so I'm going to and here's the three I was telling you about up under off the top there's one there and there's one there and come on focus and there's one here okay so we're going to take these out but first thing I'm going to do is take this off they make a wrench a regular wrench that, that will fit this um, kind of looks like a spark plug wrench but it's not so don't try it <laughs> but it looks like a spark plug wrench a spark plug socket with the side cut out of it don't do that just get you a 7 16 wrench. Be careful. Don't break it. Make sure you unplug it. Some guys will do it without unplugging it. But I find, you know, that spins the wires. Puts a lot of stress on them. You don't want to do that because if you do uh, kind of mess with this or a wire comes unplugged, your car's not going to run right. It's going for a code. Your check engine light's going to come on if it runs at all. So... What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out. I'm trying to hold the camera because I can't get a, you know, I can't get a tripod underneath this car. Also, I'm on my jack there, and I've got the scissor jack because, like I said, uh, monkey's at work. Well, she's on her way home here shortly. Uh, I just use this. This since you're pulling this motor mount off, if you don't have something under here, this this engine's gonna twist on you, and it could hurt you. So. If you can put this thing on jacks, put the car on jack stands, get you a good jack underneath the engine there. And always use a piece of wood because that's aluminum and a jack steel that will slide real easy. See, that came right out. Now, I don't know how loose I got this bolt. Yeah. I've loosened pretty much everything that I could. Now, right up in here, I don't know if you can see that. I'll get my hand up in there. Right up in here, there's a little... There's a little 10 millimeter bolt right there. Well, 10 millimeter head. I'm not sure what size the threads are. Um, I've already loosened. I had to use a little short wrench on it because of this exhaust pipe here was getting in my way. There's that. That's loose. Now we're going to go up to the top. To the other two bolts which I should have took out while I was up here guys but I didn't there's one here's a here's that little short wrench I used a little stubby and the other one is kind of like over beside it I didn't get that other one loose enough, but let's loosen this up. There you go. 
Hmm. I'm going to set you guys there where you guys stay there if I set you here. Enough what you guys can see and what you can't. There we go. Oh, it just took one little second, but it's right beside it. And there's the other one. So, make sure it's in there. And that's your your little guard. Well, it's a heat shield is what it is. It's not a guard. So, that's all loose. Now, that'll come out once you get everything else out. Now, this bolt here is a 15 millimeter headed bolt. That's already loose, so we're going to go down underneath and pull that out. And then we can get to the starter. Okay, so let's go under here. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I hit the wrong button and turned it on the camera, so I don't know what was recorded and what wasn't. So I'm taking the second bolt out here that is part of the motor mount bracket that bolts onto the engine and uh, bell housing of the transmission. Okay, take this out there. And then these three bolts we're going to take out. Okay, but first I want to take this long bolt out that I showed you from up top. I don't know if you've seen it. It's right, right there. Those are pretty tight. You can use a, a breaker bar if you got one, but I'm using this long extendable ratchet here. I like it. It's 3 8 yeah, three-eighths drive and quarter-inch drive, but we're not here to review a ratchet, are we? We're here to make a crappy video because the sun's coming in. Where you at? And I'm trying to do this one-handed. There we go. Like I said, one-handed, guys. Now. I'm going to say you don't have to take this bolt out. Just take the other three off the bottom down here and it, it'll come out as a unit. But I like to do things a little easier. I'd rather spend another minute or two taking this bolt out if it's easier. Which in my case I found changing these to me it's easier but to each his own. take this long bolt out it's actually called a motor mount bolt the other ones we just took out the other two and the three we're getting ready to take out those are actually motor mount bracket bolts okay so let's get our let me set you down here for a second guys get you hooked up on this thing like I said I've loosened most everything As you can see, they're very long. There's the other one right there. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's go up top and see if we can't remove this motor mount bracket out of here. It's loose. So now let's see, there should be one more bolt holding this bracket on. And it's, I believe that's it right back here. So I'm going to pause you guys for a minute and I'm going to go ahead and get that bolt out. Now it's going to come out towards the back of the engine. Okay, so stick with me, guys. Okay guys, as you can see I got the motor mount out. All I did 
it was something like this all I did was turn it this way and it pretty much fell down through the bottom plenty of room you may have to finagle it just a little bit but other than that it's it came out pretty easy just turned it sideways it came out through this hole here and here's the starter right here there is this there's the starter guys all right so anyway now what we're gonna have to do we got another bolt here to take out and I think there's yeah there's one up on top up in between there we'll have to uh, I think it's got to come out but let's go ahead and take this bolt here out get my hair ratchet where to go it's up here I'll try to do this one-handed Okay guys, here is the motor mount we took out. This is kind of how it sets in there, but of course it sets down in there. Uh, this, a lot of guys will not take out. And you don't have to. I took it out for another reason. Um, num number one, it, there's only three bolts. An extra, you know, ten seconds per bolt, whatever. You saw it come out real easy. Uh, it gives you more room. And here's the other piece but another reason why I wanted to, to take this out is to check our motor mount here's the motor mount itself see that rubber in there see how cracked that thing is it's all cracked up it it actually needs a motor mount now I'm not going to put one in it today because like I said I may have to do an engine change and I know what caused this okay because there is a problem with it where if it gets up around three grand uh, it starts surging real bad <laughs> like you're turning the key on and off and that, I think that's well heat gets to them too but that didn't help this any so uh, I will get a new one regardless of what happens a little bit later so making yourself right at home there ain't you? Okay, so, and another thing, guys, now, I don't know, this one didn't do it, but the number eight, they're saying, which, the number eight fuse, if you pull your fuse and relay center off, see, here's the front of the car, come around the side, just these two little clips here, and you pull that off, the number eight fuse, they're saying, if you keep blowing this number eight fuse right here, 
they say that's nine times out of ten you you've got a bad starter. Now this one, this starter actually, what the hell? Check him out. He's wanting to go for a ride. He loves to ride. This starter was actually locked up and uh, it did not blow that fuse. But they're saying if it if you keep blowing that fuse, you could have a draggy starter um, or something. You know, up in here is um, maybe short now, but. I mean, you can tell this thing has had an oil leak at one time, but there's the old starter, and I did test it, and it, it just, you, you can like smell, you get, if you guys ever smelled a, uh, a hot electric motor, that's the smell I was getting from it when I tested it, and it did not spin. If you tapped on it, you could get it to spin, but spin real slow, so the starter is bad. $127 so we're going to go get get one here shortly and we're going to put it back on for you I don't know what footage I got um, taking this thing off because of the battery issues and camera issues but you know the starter kind of this goes up from underneath up there and a lot of guys they won't take out I don't know if you can see it down in there let's see if I can see it right there that is where your O2 sensor, your oxygen sensor goes in. Now, you don't have to take that out, but I did because it's not hard to take out. and only takes a second, and a lot of guys will, you know, put it up here out of the way. I don't like leaving, leaving it hang by itself. You know, I don't want to drop the starter on it and damage that because, you know, these are like 70 bucks, you know. So, better safe than sorry. I just, you know, there's ways around it. I'm not in that big of a hurry. I don't have to worry about it. So, anyway, guys, there you go. There's the old starter. We'll be back with you with the new starter. And I'll show you a little bit of, of putting it on because, like I said, I don't know what all I've got for you. So, I'll give you a little bit, like I said, of putting it back on. And, you know, there's that little heat shield right here. You know, so it kind of goes. Let's see if I can get this right here goes on here like this that's where that one goes just like that and you know that long bolt goes through here and then you've got these two here of course that'd be on the bottom that's bolted up to the engine and you'll have that that bolt that's a that top bolt that was right down in here it's it looks bad to get to because of this wiring um, it's not that bad. You can get to it with a ratcheting wrench. I use the ratchet, but you can get to it with a ratcheting wrench or a regular wrench. You turn it out, you turn or two, and it'll come out by with your fingers. And like I said, these three are the bottom ones you see me take out with my little guns. So, all right, guys, I'll be back with you. And I don't know what his deal is, but I think he's going to go for a ride. But anyway, guys, I'll be back with you. And go get the starter but for you it's just going to be a second so anyway guys hang in there and sorry about the poor camera work but you know we'll get better i promise all right guys hang on hey guys shea bear 1000 again today we're going to be replacing this starter on a 2005 chrysler sebring convertible Stay tuned. Let's get with it. Okay, guys. We're back. I did get the starter up in there. I was going to film some of that for you, but... Uh, damn it. I just couldn't do it with one hand, and I couldn't get the camera to stay where I needed it to be. So, let's lower the hood down for a second. Hang on, guys. Okay, guys, we're back. It's up in here. Um, the uh, the starter went right up in. Just uh. Once you get your wires on, put the backup in first and put your uh, nozzle on there. 
an important issue was the uh, you may have a shim that comes off of there make sure you get it back on and the hardest part was this heat shield that's the hardest part I had getting this thing back together now you guys might ask do I really need it well the answer is no but later on down the line you're gonna have problems with uh, your starter getting hot your wires getting hot and cracking and falling off you're just gonna have problems later on put it back on I mean it wasn't hard hard it's just kind of tedious a little bit of painting ass but it wasn't bad so we're going to put this uh, O2 sensor back in here and we're going to get it tightened down and uh, we're going to start it up and make sure it works all right now this thing does have lifter issues but before I change the engine I want to see because I can put a reman engine in here for around 800 bucks I can't even do the heads on this for that that kind of money so if I'm going to tear it down, I'm going to go ahead and put a, you know, a new uh, remand engine in it. So I've got to hook the battery up and I'll put all this stuff back together. But I'm going to put you on hold just for a second and I'll be back with you. Okay guys, she's back together. I'm going to set you right here. You guys ready to hear this thing sound like a sewing machine? Because it ticks and it ticks like crazy. And of course, cars going past just as soon as I bring the camera out. But anyway, let's see if it's going to start. You guys hear that? I'm going to try to get that to quit. This is going to be another video of what I'm going to do. I'm going to. Um, Shut this off first. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of my workbench. is a mess. We were supposed to clean the garage today, but it didn't happen. I'm going to use some of this stuff. Motor Medic Motor Flush first. What you do with that stuff, of course, it's another video. Uh, you put it in, let it idle for five minutes, drain your oil up, change your oil, whatever, and put some stuff in it. But I'm going to get to that here in a minute. But anyway, so it started up. The battery was shot. I couldn't even get it to take a charge. Uh, nothing. It was clear dead. And like I said, by tapping on the starter, yes, it would crank over. And I got it to start once, but that was it. So I knew the starter was bad. Uh, I checked it with this battery, and it, it's just shot. So as you can see, it starts up just fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together. But I'm gonna leave it up on the blocks because I'm gonna change the oil too or up on the jacks because I'm going to change the oil too so I'm going to get with that and or get on to that so anyway guys as always thanks for watching can you see me there thanks for watching and I uh, hope you guys have a great day check out our videos comment like rate subscribe but that's a starter change on that thing sorry I didn't get as much filmed as I wanted to it's not something that just somebody that's changed their oil once or twice can do, but anybody that's that's done starters, alternators, tune-up, stuff like that, you can do it. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Just uh, If I wasn't videotaping, I probably could have had it changed in about 20 to 30 minutes. But So anyway, guys, there you go. There's another one. Like I said, keep cool, guys, and I'll chat at you in the next one. So remember, Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Bye-bye, guys. See ya.